and shit. See, I don't have to do it. <laughs> anyway, never mind. <laughs> However compelling this is, there is more work to do for us before we have an accurate picture. There is an other stat we have to go and accomplish putting together. We have to bring about a stat that shows also the amount of earthquakes within a six month period that we have seen now, if that has occurred actually in any given year. Now, this is, this is quite a task. If you're talking about a hundred years to look through every year and see if there is a six month period that we have had three earthquakes, magnitude eight plus. And then to think that we have to also look and accomplish it within a year of an earthquake, which is not, you know, the earthquakes don't know years. So we will have to establish in whatever 12 month period, if it is such a composition of three earthquakes, magnitude eight or above. That would be finally then in a more accurate way of looking at at least the last hundred years that we can see if we have had that in the, in the past so century. So let's do, let's make another stat together and uh, stat and dig in. Let's go to this spreadsheet here. Start with, so a minimum of three magnitude 8.0 great earthquakes in 12 consecutive months in the past hundred years. That's a lot of work. We got to go through every year. And on top of that, remember, Earthquakes don't know about 12 months. They don't know about, uh, oh, I just, I'm an earthquake. I'm an 8.0 and that happened in June, you know, on June 2nd, 19, whatever. <laughs> Earthquakes have no clue about months. We would need to look here at the broad spectrum of any type of set of 12 months in order to get an idea. So what I did is I went here, I did my search earthquake catalog. We went to custom, of course, and did the 8.0 minimum. We did the time, which was 1920. We started with that. And this gives us a full year. So this first year we looked at and we said, okay, how many of these quakes are there? Two. Two quakes. If you do this every year, you have to do this a hundred times times 12. So I would have to input this 1200 times. And I'm going to show you why, because this is obviously I took a 12 month period. And in that 12 month period, we see exactly two earthquakes above uh, eight an 8.3 and 8.1. Uh, one was in December and the other one was in September. So to do this accurately, I would have to go through it like this. And that would take me 1200 inputs to get through this. And obviously we're going to be here a week together in order to get this done, <laughs> but a week together is not going to be fun. So I'm going to try to take this out and make this short. I'll do the work and I'll put it on and show you what I found. <laughs> Two hours later. Six hours later. Day three. And then we're going to go to 23-12s, right? Oh, what do you know? Ha! In that 12-month period, we have three earthquakes greater than an 8 point. Did I miss this the first time? Because I didn't think we had it that fast already. But anyway, ha, this is definitely right, isn't it? We already found one. <laughs> so here goes our theory that we were so worried the first time saying, yes, this looks like an uptick. Guess what? If we take a 12 month period, at least now, uh, granted, this is not in a six month period. This is not in a, in a set of six months because the other one is definitely six months, only six months apart. However, let's see, uh, this is uh, February, August, November. So between February, there's three months more. So this is in a nine month period. So there's a couple months more than our six month period. Well, there we go. But in other words, I honestly can say now already that we don't have to be too worried that we have three earthquakes of an 8.1 or higher in a 12 month period. The other thing I'm gonna point out is that what I'm looking for is definitely that it's not an aftershock or a trigger shock of the other earthquake. Now this one is here is in Russia and this one is here in Japan and this is in Chile. So these three are definitely all far enough away from one another. And so this does count as a valid set of earthquakes. So we're going to go put this in our stats. We found three and this was in a set of nine months. Making this more clear, is it an uh, or slash after slash maybe trigger shock? And this was no. 
And then this one, let's look at what kind of set this is, guys. So we need to know for sure that it is three shots in the world on three different locations. So we need to look at that and see what it is. Yes or no, circle. Okay, here we go. 41, here it is. 42 and 42. Now the 42 one is in Chile, far away from that one. So yeah, that counts. And this is South Africa. This is all the way underneath here. That's not a trigger event. That's a total different fault, these two. So these three indeed are a candidate of a 12-month period, consecutive months. So there's another one in 12 months. You see here we have three now. It's in a 12-month period. So 60, 60, 60. Oh, we got another for sure set of three. But what are they? What kind of three are they? Are they triggered? Not that one. That's Chile. That's Japan. How about that? That's Chile. And that's Chile. Oh, and look how close they are. There is a four shark, guys. <laughs> is this cool to buy? Look at this. The 9.5, the biggest earthquake on record, had an 8.1 four shock. Back in May, on May 21st, it had an 8.1 earthquake. And that led up to the 9.5 quake. You never hear this either. See, this is why it's so cool to find this thing. This is exciting. This is so cool. You know now for sure this was a either foreshock. Yeah, it definitely was. It was a foreshock. The 9.5 biggest earthquake in man's history that we have on record, a huge foreshock to an even bigger main earthquake that we see here, the 9.5. This is the biggest earthquake we know to today's day. But this is cool. This is awesome to find. Look at that. The depth, by the way. Look at the depth. Identical. 25 kilometers deep. Look at this earthquake, guys. Right next to each other. The 9.5 was preceded to an 8.1 earthquake on the same fault. This is a great find. I love it. There we go. So, ultimately saying that this, these three are a set of three. Now, not a set of three, because we have a four shock. A four shock. We have a four shock to the 9.5. Wow. Man. Good stuff. But do you see, guys, we are getting already a picture here, clearly, that three major earthquakes in a less than six-month period is not uncommon, especially over the whole world, and then being not triggered or four or after shock. It's not totally uncommon. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven events actually here. Wow. And one of them that is already four within 13 months that we have right here. So yeah, are we really special today's date? I guess not. We're not there yet. So in the next six months, if we get another earthquake, then we will talk. Because we will have four in a 12-month cycle. We're not there yet. We might even have one if we keep looking here. So this is a maybe, and we had another maybe was here. And we have a bunch of no's already and one yes. Ha! <laughs> this is fantastic. Yes, 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 yes. So this should give us the last earthquake. And here we go. In 21, we have had in five and a half months' time, we have had three earthquakes. And that's why that's why we did this whole thing. So there is nothing in 20, but in 21, we have three. People were asking me, is this the largest that we have seen? Three big, huge quakes in just six months, less than six months? This is why we started this whole thing. So we are on the end of this. The 19... 20, we don't have nothing, and 21 has three. Okay, so 20 has nothing. 21 has three that we know in a, let's say, a six-month period. And we are saying that, so these three, and they're definitely not triggered. They're not four or aftershocks. It's those three that we look at right here, which two of these occurred in the last month. So these three are in the world. They're definitely not triggered. They're not a foreshock, not an aftershock. They are Three major quakes of eight and above. So we can conclude in indeed less than five months. We have no trickage or anything. There it is, guys. Here's our total stat of what we're looking at. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen events. Is that with hours inflated? So here we go. End result of this full on research. Conclusion is that no, we are not at an event of nature grouped earthquakes within a six month period. I mean, right now we're really on the top. If we would get one more within the next couple of months, we would definitely top it because we know that it's one set of four right here in 2007. We had a set of four that was nine months apart. So that's the top right now. Are we the top here? Not at the moment at least because we got another, we got a couple more fours here, you remember? And the rest here's a four in 13 months. And that was definitely not triggered or anything. 
So, okay. So there's your answer. The answer is, are we looking at the most earthquakes, big earthquakes, in a very short amount of time, within six months? Yeah, we're pretty high up there, but we're not the most. You know, there's even been four within one, nine months, even, in seismology history. We're not there. Nope. The answer is no. So, we can relax. We can relax. We can breathe. We can actually breathe. And we know we're, we're okay. We're going to be okay. Up to now. So, guys, this is great. It's always good having you guys here. Good uh, seeing the facts of uh, our science. Science in action. It's good. Science in action is good, guys. I love it. Thanks for being here. Have a great day. And we'll talk soon again. God bless. <laughs> anyway, never mind. <laughs>